Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to the binomial PD function on a Casio FX991EX class Wiz calculator, as you can see here. The binomial PD function, or probability density function, gives us the probability that a random variable x equals an observed value x when that random variable comes from a binomial model with n trials and p for the probability of success. So I'm assuming, by the way, that you're familiar with the binomial distribution. If not, do go back and check my earlier video tutorials on this. Now this function, the binomial PD function, may well be on other calculators or there should be a similar function anyway. Now, in order to demonstrate this, what I've got here is a Casio ClassWiz emulator. And we've got a few questions here that I'll take you through. So first of all, if X is distributed binomially, where we've got N as being 20, the number of trials is 20, and the probability of success is 0.3, then I want to evaluate the probability that x equals 8. Well, the first thing we can do is make sure that we have it in the right mode. So on this calculator, we go to the menu and we need to select mode 7 here, which is the statistical distributions menu. OK, so we can either do that by using the cursor and going to number 7 and pressing equals, or we could just be in any menu here and select 7. That will take us to this display here. And we're looking for the option number 4, binomial PD, the binomial probability density function. So if I enter 4, then I'm presented with these two options. Now, I'll go through both of them in this tutorial, but for now I'm going to select option two, the variable one. So if we do that, put two in, then we're presented with this menu here. The observed value, little x, the number of trials n, and p, the probability of success. So in order to answer this first question here, we can see that the observed value is 8. So we'll put 8 in and press equals. Now it's asking for the number of trials n, which is 20. So we'll put in 20 and then equals. Now we're looking for the probability p of success, which is 0 0.3. So I'll enter that as 0 0.3. And if we press equals again, we'll see that we get that probability 0 0.1143 and so on. So that's the probability that x equals 8. So 0.1143 and so on. Now when it comes to working out the next set of probabilities here for this distribution here, what I could do is cancel what we've got here. Let's just press equals. Takes us back to the binomial PD screen and we could change our parameters. We've got the observed value x is now 7, so we could put 7 in, press equals, and n is now 16, so put 16 in, equals again, and for p it's going to be 0 0.4, so 0 0.4, press equals, and then equals again. So we've got the probability now of x equaling 7. 0.1888 and so on. So we could write that one in there. Now obviously I could go back and do much the same again for the probability that x equals 9 by pressing equals and just simply entering the 9 there. n and p would be exactly the same as we had before. So if I press equals that sets that, press equals again and we've got the probability that x equals 9. So I'll put that in, as you can see, it's 0.0839 and so on. And again, 
I could do much the same for 10, but I'm going to show you a quicker way for something like this in a moment. I've just pressed the equals, takes us back to this menu, and then I can enter the 10, press equals and equals again, and you can see we've got 0.03917. So what is this quicker way that we could do, say, working out all these probabilities for one distribution in one quick go? Well, let's just come out of this and suppose we were asked this question again. Let's just go back to the menu. So we select the statistics distributions, number seven again. We're looking at number four, the binomial probability density function. So I'll press four. And this time we'll go to this option here, list, okay? So we'll enter one and now we've got a column for our observed values x. So if we're working these out, we would type in 7 equals 9 equals and 10 equals. So we've got the three observed values. And if I press equals again, it takes us back to our distribution here with these parameters. It could be that these might be set to something else, so you're going to have to reset them. But by pressing equals here, you'll see that we've got our three values here illustrated in this column. So that's nice and quick when you've got quite a lot of probabilities to work out for the same distribution. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then on how we go about using the binomial PD function or probability density function for the class with calculator. And as I said earlier, there could well be a similar function on other calculators. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in another video.